Okay, it's been a while since I did a Crossman 760 video, but what I wanted to do is uh, I wanted to share with you the pellet that I'm using here for this test. It's the Excite Line um, piping pellet, 7.48 grain. It's a wad cutter. It does have a beveled edge on it that does help to speed it up a little bit more. A little bit higher ballistic coefficient than some other quad cutters. So what I decided to do is I was using the clip here. It's a five shot clip. So I decided to use uh, ten shot groups and there's a reason why I do ten shot groups is so I can get averages and also so I can see a pattern of what the rifle is doing with the pellet. For example the pattern that we see here is these shots of 10 right here, we can see that the, that there's a few over on this side and there's a few over on this side and if you look right here that could come over a little bit so when you're uh, zeroing in this rifle for 15 yards it's going to be kind of difficult but uh, something like this you could work with and just move this over about uh, three quarters of an inch or an inch or something like that so all them shots are pretty much around that uh, aim point right there. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to read off some information for you. Uh, some of the stuff I put in my ballistic soft software program. Um, when I get ballistic coefficients I do shoot uh, over a crony so them are kind of accurate because I don't rely on software for that I actually shoot over a crony at 15 yards. So the ballistic coefficient I'm going to give you is a 15 yard sample so and you should always do them with uh, 10 shot strings I didn't I just used a few pellets but uh, you should do 10 shot strings when you're uh, working with your velocity to get the, the velocity written down for ballistic coefficient so anyway what we got here is obviously we got the Crossman 760 and we're pumping it five times and it's the Excite plinking pellet 7.48 grain wad cutter muzzle velocity is 425 feet per second our our scope is a nine power scope this is actually a this scope here is actually a three to nine by 32 so once again our scope power is nine and scope height is two inches now what that is for the ballistic software is it's not the it's not the height of the scope from here all the way to here. What it is is it's center line to center line, center line of bore to center line of bell. So it would be right here and right here, and that's two inches. So, and then you can line it up with your ruler or whatever. So, uh, scope height is two inches for your software, and it's 10 shots per sheet of paper. And over here, um, I always write down my procedure, what I do. Uh, I always have a routine. So what I did is I, I oiled the pad here and fired a few warm-up shots first. Had a couple drops on that pad. And uh, what we got here is uh, a muzzle velocity of 425 feet per second. And uh, shooting it over the crony at 15 yards, we got 378 feet per second. And our ballistic coefficient is 0 0.016, actually 0 0.017 if you want to round it off. Uh, now once again, when you're taking ballistic coefficients, you want to do a 10-shot string over the crony. So yeah, using a lot of pellets for that, but uh, that's actually one of the better ways to do it. So what we have here is drop based on that ballistic coefficient that we can predict. Now uh, the drop isn't what you think. Some people think that when it says at 20 yards it's dropping 0.49 which is almost a half inch. What they think that means is that if they take one shot it's going to drop that far. Not necessarily. This is based off the groups. So, so for instance at 20 yards if you have a half inch drop what that means is the group is going to drop a half inch. So you understand what I'm saying? The group drops 
a half inch, not the individual shot. So you have to think of this drop in terms of the whole group dropping and not the individual shot. So that's something that confuses people sometimes. So that's, that's why you want to use a lot of pellets for your testing, a lot of pellets for everything. So anyway, we got a zero at 15 yards, and, and then uh, at 20 yards we dropped 0.49. At uh, 25 yards we dropped 1.62, that, so that's a little bit over one and a half inches. Uh, 30 yards, 3.49, so that's about three and a half inches there. Uh, 6.11 and 9.58. And most scopes can probably adjust out to that range right there. Now, if you have that cheap uh, 4x15 that comes with the rifle, one thing you need to know about them uh, cheaper scopes is, number one, you never want to use them on spring piston rifles because they're not spring piston rated. Number two, you don't want to use it on this rifle if you're stretching your uh, range. The reason why is because you're going to adjust them turrets. You're going to have to adjust them so far that it's going to get spongy inside there. And when it gets spongy inside there, there's a tube in there. And what that's going to do is that's going to wobble around and it's going to throw your shots off. So you don't want to do that. And the other thing is if you get wide scopes or if you get wide groups, don't always blame the scope. What you want to do is you want to fire sets and then analyze the sets when you're done. If you're going to sight in a rifle, what you want to do is you want to take you want to take the shot groups and find out the patterns and how they're behaving. Like for instance this pattern here. If I started shooting this pattern all the time then I know all I have to do is move this over about an inch and all the shots are going to be pretty much around in this area. So, so what we got here uh, for shots, this is this is the first ten, the second ten, and, and the third ten. What I wanted to show you here is an, was is another reason why I do ten shots is because I can get averages out of ten, so I can tell what the average is for what you can expect. For instance, eighty percent of the shots on on this grouping right here is about one and a fourth inches. Now, if we took all the shots together. 100% of them would be a 2 inch group. On this one, 80% of the shots is 1 and a half inches, and if we took 100% of it, it's 2 inch groups. On this one, 80%, a little better, or 80% is about an inch, and if we took 100%, it's 2 inches. So, by just by shooting these pieces of paper and collecting the data from this, you can kind of predict some things. For example, the worst that the rifle got was two inches for all of these sheets. So what we can predict from that is that if you have a target that's at 15 yards that's two inches, you're most likely going to hit it 100% of the time. And another thing we can predict is um, because it's 15 yards, we can also predict in some ways, this isn't perfect, but sometimes you can predict that when you double 15 yards to 30 yards, that 2 inch group is going to become 4 inches. So a 4 inch target would be this uh, elevation for giving 2 liter bottle here. It's 4 inches from here to here, but it's got a lot of uh, elevation forgiveness there. So. Uh, what we what we really want to focus on though is since 80 percent of the shots were were here were say one and a fourth one and a half and one inch so let's take one and a half for instance 80 percent of our shots one and a half inches so if you take if you take one and a half times two that's three inch groups so that means that uh, at 25 30 yards or whatever um, this pop can right here because this pop can is about two and a half inches wide and it does have some elevation forgiveness right there but at 15 yards what do we do about 15 yards okay so at 15 yards we have this Dixie cup here 
and this Dixie cup is two and an eighth at the top if you don't count the rim and about one and a half on the bottom. If you put this Dixie cup here you'll find that most of your shots for reliability on a Dixie cup is going to be pretty good. Probably about 80 percent of the shots are going to hit this Dixie cup at 15 yards at least just from this uh, data we got here. But what you could do with these Dixie cups now is you can fill these with water. You can get the paper ones. They're much cheaper. Fill them with water. You can see my videos where I actually have a Dixie cup challenge for you guys. You take uh, 10 Dixie cups. I don't care how far away it is. Just use Dixie cups. 10 of them. You've got 10 shots. You only got 10 shots. 10 pellets. And you have to do the best you can with them 10 pellets. So when you're done shooting the 10 pellets, you see what your percentage is because if you got 10 cups, it's pretty obvious what the percentage is. If you shoot 7 out of 10, it's 70%. So anyway, the Dixie Cup Challenge is kind of a fun thing to do. And uh, I thought it was kind of a cool concept because you see guys shooting rifles uh, out at a th thousand yards at these uh, milk jugs. So I thought, why not figure out something for air guns? Right? Why not uh, shoot some little Dixie Cups? You know, because... Our range isn't like their range. We have, what, about uh, 50, 75 yards maybe, maybe 100, maybe 100 if we're crazy. So anyway, another note too is that, uh, yes, you got to try different pellets. And this is a smoothbore, by the way. So this has absolutely no rifling at all in it. And uh, the other thing you want to make sure of too is... I don't know if you guys notice this, but uh, when you put the clips in, sometimes when you push the bolt forward, it kind of hangs up in there, especially the middle shot. So we, what you have to do is, when you push the bolt forward, you want to make sure you go gently. You don't want to smash that pellet, because it's already bad enough that the accuracy is the way it is, but if you smash the front of the pellet, then you're going to have you know, even more problems and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't necessarily need a 3 to 9 by 32 inch scope because of one reason because a 3 to 9 by 32 I mean the accuracy probably isn't deserving of a 3 to 9 but I just had an extra one a 4 by 32 scope would be great preferably a mill dot scope would help a little bit so and like I was saying for for drop now you have to remember that when you're testing for drop you don't want to fire just one shot at that distance. You want to fire maybe say like five shots and then calculate or see if this data matches. But some of you that have the Crossman 760, um, you know, have said things like I don't have a chronometer and uh, software and stuff like that. Um, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing some of the work for you so that you can enter some of this stuff in the ballistic software and uh, if you're out in the field you know that uh, if you pump this up five times you know that that this pellet here is going to be 425 and I gave you your drop charts right here and like I said if you're out in the field now and it drops uh, nine inches yeah 9.58 inches at uh, 40 yards remember that I'm not talking about the individual shot. I'm talking about the groupings. For instance, these groupings are pretty much zeroed. If you look at the groups, the center of the groups is right here. So what's going to happen, like I said before, if, uh, if you got a 9-inch drop or a 10-inch drop, it's not based off one shot. It's based off the group, but the center of the group is what it's based off of. So, for instance, if we were at 9 inches right here, you wouldn't count this one or this one. You would, you would count from the center, and then you would find that sometimes the, the software is kind of accurate. And then, of course, you got wind conditions and other things like that. Uh, the ballistic coefficient on this wad cutter is just a little bit high, but that's because of the fact that uh, I'm indoors. And the other thing is it's only a 15-yard sample. And uh, the pellet is does have a beveled edge on it. So one of my one of my favorite cheaper pellets is different than this. This is a 
excite econ or no they excite uh, plinking but the econ looks just like this it does have a beveled edge right here and it doesn't have them little fins in there but uh, having that that little beveled edge right there really does kind of make an improvement on the ballistic coefficient somewhat so instead of being all the way flat it's got that beveled edge so that kind of helps a little bit to raise the BC so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, there's some of you guys uh, online that uh, have some of these older 760s I wish I would have kept mine you know with the brass bolt and stuff like that it looked real nice um, but uh, this is a gun that a lot of guys are tearing apart and investigating and stuff like that they're doing surgery on these guns and putting scopes on them and you know doing wood projects and stuff and it makes kind of sense to me because it's they're they seem pretty easy to work on and the other thing is uh, they're very cheap like for instance this rifle here you can get for even though it's a sm smooth bore I'll call it a rifle anyway um, this one here you can pick these up for about 30 bucks and a 4x32 scope with mill dot uh, capability or even if it's not it's going to cost you what about 20 bucks or something like that so for $50 you know 50 60 dollars you got this whole setup right here and then you got uh, five dollars fifty cents for 500 pellets so uh, yeah it's a cheap way to get started and yes granted you don't have the best groups in the world like I said you got these targets to think about right here so um, if you want to get out further say then uh, 30 yards or whatever instead of this if you don't think you're gonna hit this all the time then maybe you could just go for a milk jug for like 50 yards or whatever so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video it's been fun checking this uh, rifle out and I definitely want to try some other pellets with this but uh, the one thing that drives me nuts about smooth bores is you can't just fire like three three shots three shots three shots and just kind of make an evaluation you have to fire a lot of shots because of the simple fact that it, it, you don't know what it's going to do I mean sometimes it's going to be like this and other times it's going to be like this it's going to widen up so that's why you want to shoot several sheets you can do it in sets of five too you can do five sets of five I think five sets of five is a great standard or sets of ten three sets of ten or whatever is a good standard to go by to give that pellet a chance to prove itself to you because if you just take three shots like some guys do online and then just uh, throw in the towel you're not going to know what potential that pellet could have so you want to shoot a lot of pellets that's a good thing to shoot a lot of pellets but anyway thank you very much for watching you guys and uh, if you have any questions or comments you know what to do you want to share something with me about your 760 if you got mods or whatever let me know what's going on so anyway thank you very much for watching you guys